Hello, I'm Sarah, and this is my coworker, Dr. Fawcett. We're from the Town of Queen Creek Water Division. Hi, everyone. The Town of Queen Creek Water Division delivers water to our homes and businesses around town and surrounding areas. Thanks for joining us today. I know you miss being at school and I miss hanging out with you. So let's spend some time together to learn about something really important to us, water, where it comes from, what we do with it, and why it's such an important resource, especially here in the desert. We're also going to solve some mysteries. So it's important to listen carefully for important clues. Dr. Fawcett is going to help us learn about water because she's a hydrologist. Can you say hydrologist? Great. Do you know what that means? Dr. Fawcett, can you explain please? Yes, hydro means water and ologist means a person who studies something. So a hydrologist is a person who studies water. That's me. First, we want you all to know that the town of Queen Creek is very serious about following the guidelines for social distancing. While you may think Sarah and I are close together, we're actually far apart in separate rooms. Raise your hand if you used water today. Wow, just about all of you have used water. So how did you use water today? We know you've been washing your hands a lot. Kids often tell me they also use water for drinking, bathing, showering, cleaning, cooking, swimming, even for their animals and plants. Can you think of any other uses, Dr. Fawcett? Yeah, lots of people are using water elsewhere on our behalf to grow food for us to eat, grow cotton for our clothing, and in all sorts of manufacturing processes for everything from making soda cans to making computers. We sure use a lot of water, Sarah. Yes, but here we are living in a desert where all people, plants, and animals need water to survive. Do you know the name of our desert? That's right. What is it, Dr. Fawcett? We live in the Sonoran Desert. Do we have a lot of water in our desert? No. How much rain do you think we get in a year? What do you think, Sarah? Hmm, six feet? No, three feet? Even less. One foot? Not even one foot. The Queen Creek area only gets about nine inches of rain per year. This roller is one foot or 12 inches. So nine inches is less than one foot of rain. So it's very important that we talk about water because we don't have much of it here in the desert, but we can't live without it. Do you know what a resource is? Can you tell us, Dr. Fawcett? A resource is a supply of something that we can use. Natural resources are materials we use from the earth. These include air, trees, and oil. Some natural resources, such as coal or oil, are non-renewable. Once they're used, they don't renew themselves. They're gone. It's important to reduce the use of our non-renewable natural resources. What natural resource do you think this plastic water jug is made from? Do you know, Sarah? It's made from oil or petroleum. Is oil or petroleum renewable or non-renewable? Right, kids, it's non-renewable because it takes such a long time to form underground. Look around the room you're in at home. Do you see things made from plastic? Good. Now look around again. Do you see anything made of metal? What's made of metal in your room, Dr. Fawcett? Let's see. Um, actually, my easel right here, right next to me, is made out of metal. Metal comes from rocks that contain certain kinds of minerals. Again, they take a very long time to form. Are metals renewable or non-renewable? Absolutely, metals are non-renewable. Great thinking. Can you think of some natural resources that are renewable? Exactly, trees, wind, and sunshine are renewable natural resources. 
More of that resource is made available through the Earth's natural systems. More trees will grow, the wind will always blow, and the sun will always shine. So we now know that everything we use is a natural resource. But why do you think we're talking about natural resources? What renewable natural resource is very important here in the Sonoran Desert and is the reason we're here today? Hmm, water. Exactly. And even though it's renewable through the water cycle, it's very limited in the desert. Water is such an important resource that without it, we don't have a future here in the Sonoran Desert or anywhere. That's why this presentation is called Our Water, Our Future. Today, we are all going to be hydrologists, scientists who study water like Dr. Fawcett. We are going to learn a lot about water, where our water comes from, how we use it, and how we can reduce the use of our water. Our future depends on it. But as hydrologists, you need to have some background knowledge in order to understand our water use at home. How are we gonna do that, Sarah? Well, instead of just learning vocabulary words, you're going to have to learn some vocabulary words by playing charades. Do you know how to play? I'm going to act out some words and you're going to discover what they are. I can't make any sounds while I act out the clues, but you can shout out your answers at home. Are you ready? I'll give you a big hint. All of the words have something to do with water. Here's your first word. Okay, let's see. Something's coming down from the sky. Rain, maybe? Okay, and now you're cold. So if it's coming down from the sky and it's cold, snow. Okay, I think I got it, I got it. Kids, do you know? Is it precipitation? Yes, you figured it out. Tell us about precipitation, Dr. Fawcett. Precipitation is moisture that can come down from the sky as rain, snow, hail. Can you say precipitation? Precipitation. Great. Do you know the most common form of precipitation in Arizona? That's right, rain. But do we get a lot of rain here in Arizona? What did you tell us earlier, Sarah? We don't get a lot of rain here. Do you remember when I showed you my ruler earlier? We only get less than nine inches of precipitation a year. Okay, time for me to act out the next vocabulary word. Hmm, you might be stretching. Oh, no, something's going up, up to the sky. Let's see, water that goes up to the sky. Oh, I know, kids, do you know? Is it evaporation? You got that right. Can you say evaporation? Evaporation. Well done. Great guessing, everyone. Tell us about evaporation, Dr. Fawcett. Thanks. Water is special because it can change forms. Liquid water can turn into a gas called water vapor. Notice how the word vapor is part of the word evaporation. So it's easy to remember. Next one, Sarah. Let's see, something's moving. Oh, is it flowing? Is it water flowing? Okay, I think I know it. This one is a hard one. Do any of you know the answer? It's runoff. If there's a lot of precipitation, water can flow across the Earth's surface. That's right. Runoff might be flowing in rivers or in washes that were once dry, or it might flow across your yard or street or the fields at school. Okay, time for your next word. Hmm, something's moving down. And is it water? Okay, sinking down underground. Oh, okay, so I think it starts with a P, but it's not precipitation because we already did that one. Oh, oh, I know. How about you kids? Are you acting out percolation? Yes! Did any of you know that one? Great, that's a hard one. Mm. Can you say percolation? Percolation. Nice job. Tell us about percolation, Dr. Fawcett. 
Some water sinks down into the ground in between the grains of sand and gravel. Remember this word, it's important to know that water sinks down into the ground. We'll learn more about it today. Whew, that was fun. You were all great detectives during that game of charades. You used my silent clues to learn some vocabulary words about water. I last acted out water sinking underground by percolation. What is the underground water called? Do you know, Dr. Fawcett? That's easy, groundwater. We'll talk a lot about groundwater today. Do you know what we call the rocky layer that contains groundwater? That's the aquifer. The aquifer is made up of sand, rocks, and clay. The aquifer holds water in between all of the cracks and little spaces. Let's do an investigation to learn about the aquifer. Kids, you can try this at home later. First, Dr. Fawcett, please hold a sponge in your hands. Got it. Now, can you pour some water onto the sponge? Remember, our water is colored blue with food coloring so you can see it better. Okay, now I'm going to ask Dr. Fawcett to be very, very brave and hold that sponge upside down over her head. Should she do it, kids? Really? Uh-oh. Uh I mean, what do you think will happen? Let's do this investigation to find out. I'm going to turn that sponge over and hold it over my head. Hmm. Wow. Did anything happen? Did you get wet, Dr. Fawcett? No, not at all. But didn't I just pour water onto the sponge? Where did, where did the water go? Do you know, Sarah? I think the water is inside the sponge. It got trapped in the tiny holes. Just like the water that gets trapped in the sponge, some of the rain and snow sinks down into the ground and ends up getting trapped in the spaces between the rocks. So an aquifer is like a big sponge underground. How many of you know the word for water in Spanish? That's right, agua. So the prefix aqua is like the word agua. And that should help you easily remember that the aquifer holds our ground water. Remember to try that sponge investigation at home later with your family. That's all the vocabulary words for now. I think you're ready to learn more about water in the QC and surrounding areas. But first, if you're just joining in, I'm Sarah from the town of Queen Creek. I'm here with my hydrologist friend, Dr. Fawcett, presenting Our Water, Our Future. Because you're not in school, we're joining you safely at home. We're so glad you're learning about water with us today. So now let's talk about the three forms of water. We've already talked a lot about liquid water. It's the form of water that we use the most for drinking, washing, toothbrushing, cooking, or swimming. What's another form of water that we already talked about? Do you remember? Dr. Fawcett, what is it called? Well, water can also be a gas or water vapor, which forms when liquid water evaporates. What's the third form that water can be in? Correct. Water can be in a solid called ice. If water is cold enough, it freezes and becomes solid ice. So water is really very special because it can be solid, liquid, or gas. And it can easily change forms as it moves from one place to another. Well, now it's time to learn about places that water can be in the water cycle here in the QC area. One way scientists learn about things is to use models. A model can help us see and understand things that might not otherwise be obvious. Dr. Fawcett has a model that shows some of the places that water can be in Queen Creek and surrounding areas. Dr. Fawcett, can you tell us why models are important to scientists? Sure. Scientists can use models to learn about things that we can't easily see. Can you think of some models used by scientists? Great ideas. Kids at schools often tell me that a globe is a model or a skeleton of the human body. Let's think about the Earth now. First, 
Can you look below your feet and see what's underground? Sarah, can you do that? No, no one has x-ray vision. Well, only superheroes in movies. But we can look at this model to see what it's like underground. Our model is like a slice through the earth. It's like when you have a layer cake for your birthday. You don't know what's inside until you slice it. And then you can see what's on the surface as well as what's inside. Has that ever happened to you kids? What about you, Dr. Fawcett? Yeah, on my last birthday, the cake had white frosting on the outside, but I didn't know what was inside. So we sliced it and there was chocolate cake with a few layers of raspberry filling. My favorite. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you made me hungry, Sarah. Oops, me too. So let's look at the model. What do you see, kids? Can you show us, Dr. Fawcett? Here's a house, some kids like you, and some desert plants and animals. In fact, it looks like Queen Creek. Now, let's find the places where water can be as part of the water cycle. Can you think of any? Let me show you some pictures while Sarah describes places water can be in the water cycle. Sure. Let's start up in the sky where water can be in the clouds. Then it might rain down on the QC and flow in the Queen Creek Wash. Remember, Queen Creek Wash is dry most of the year. That's why we call it a wash. But after a lot of rain, it can flow for a short time. Water can sink down into the soil. And if it percolates further underground, it can become groundwater. Also, plants use water. And so do animals. And guess what? People are animals too. We definitely use water. Wow, water can be found in a lot of different places. Does it always stay in one place? For example, is the groundwater always in the ground? Is the water in the clouds always in the clouds? Can you tell us, Dr. Fawcett? No, water moves around. From the clouds, it precipitates down to the ground, moves through the soil, maybe it gets used by plants, or maybe it percolates down to become groundwater. Or maybe it runs off the soil to a river. And for us here in Queen Creek, moisture from the Sea of Cortez moves into Arizona via the clouds to bring us our summer monsoon thunderstorms. The Sea of Cortez, sometimes called the Gulf of California, is our closest ocean. If you've ever visited Rocky Point in Mexico, you've been to the Sea of Cortez. Wow, water is really cool. It can travel here from so far away. Can the water return to the clouds? Kids, what do you think? You're right, through evaporation. Do you know what we call this movement of water through nature? Do you know, Sarah? It's the water cycle. And did you know that as water moves through nature's water cycle, it is naturally cleaned and purified? That's right. It's filtered as it moves through soil, as it evaporates, impurities are left behind. And even as water moves through plants, impurities are removed. That's an amazing thing about nature's water cycle. It actually cleans water naturally. Okay, remember when I said people are included with animals when talking about the water cycle? But we people do much more with water than just drink and excrete it, don't we? Like what? How do humans use water differently than other animals? That's right. We talked about our water use earlier for washing our hands, brushing our teeth, showering, cooking, swimming, manufacturing, and more. But how do we get that water? And just what happens to that water after we've used it? Hmm. I know. Let's all be hydrologists. I'm going to ask four important questions to guide us through some investigations with the model. And we'll use our model to answer the questions. Okay, question number one. 
How does the groundwater get underground? Do you see any water in our model? No. Well, what should we do, Dr. Fawcett? Let's start by filling our groundwater model with water in a way similar to our natural water cycle. How might that be? Well, our groundwater comes from thousands of years of rain and snowmelt, so we need some precipitation. Hmm, how are we going to do that? Aha! Let's make a rainstorm right here in this room and watch the rainwater percolate into the ground. Sarah, I need your help. Can you make the sounds of a thunderstorm? Oh, yes. Yes, I can. How about some thunder? And let's make rain sounds with this rain stick. Perfect. And how about some wind sounds like this? Can you make wind sounds at home? Okay, pretend this container is a cloud full of rainwater. I'm going to make it rain. Again, the water is colored blue so you can see it better. Okay, time for a thunderstorm. And then the rain gradually stops and the sun comes out. Wow, what a great rainstorm we just made together. As you can see, the rainwater percolated down to the aquifer. So now our aquifer is filled with groundwater. The top level of the groundwater is called the water table. When the water table is at the Earth's surface, rivers and lakes can form. We call that surface water. Here you can see that the coyote can now get a drink from the Queen Creek Wash. Unfortunately, in reality, our water table is well below the surface, so the Queen Creek Wash does not flow regularly, only after it rains a lot. Sarah, time for our next question. Okay, question number two. How do we get the groundwater from the aquifer to the surface so that people can use it? We use huge machines that drill deep wells, like in this photo. The people who drill our wells are hired and supervised by the Town of Queen Creek Water Division. The Water Division is part of the town government that makes sure we get clean water delivered to our homes. Way to go, Town of Queen Creek. I think we need a stretch. So. Let's do a team cheer for the many people who work for the town of Queen Creek Water Division by spelling out the word water with our arms. Are you ready? Just follow along at home and be creative. Okay, first, give me a W. Good, and an A. Now let's make a T and an E, and an R. What's that spell? Water! Yeah. <laughs> Give yourselves a big round of applause. We got some exercise and we cheered on our friends who work for the town of Queen Creek Water Division. Phew, if you're just joining in. I'm Sarah from the town of Queen Creek Water Division, and I'm here with my hydrologist friend, Dr. Fawcett, presenting Our Water, Our Future. Because you're not in school, we're joining you safely at home. We are so glad you're learning about water with us today. Back to you, Dr. Fawcett. Tell us how the town of Queen Creek gets the water from our aquifer up to the surface so that we can use it. So, to get the water today, we must first drill, drill a deep well. I'm going to use the model to dig a well, but in reality, I'd use a big well drilling machine to dig a very deep hole, about 600 feet underground. Can you make some well drilling sounds with me? Okay, in that hole, I put a special device called a pump to bring the water up from underground. This is a special hand pump that works with our model. 
Dr. Fawcett, why don't you try out our new well? This water system actually brings water right to our homes through underground pipes. Can you see how the water comes up from the aquifer? Of course, before it comes out of the faucets at your home or school, the town of Queen Creek makes sure the water is safe and clean for you to use. Kids at home, what are some things you used water for today? We already talked about it earlier. How about you, Sarah? Well, I washed my hands a lot. I brushed my teeth, I took a shower, and I drank some water. Great. Do you think you're the only person using water from the QC's water division? Of course not. Everyone here needs water. That's right. We all use water. And we know that there are lots of people living in Queen Creek's water service area. Do you know how many people receive water from the QC, Sarah? With over 31,000 homes being served, that would equate to over 80,000. So some of Queen Creek's customers were born here. How many of you were born in Queen Creek or Santan Valley? Okay, some of you, but not everyone who lives near the QC was born here. Many people have moved here from other places. How many of you have moved here? Great, from where? Wow, sounds like you've moved here from other parts of Arizona or other states or even other countries. I moved here from Texas. What about you, Dr. Fawcett? I'm originally from Yuma. The QC area is one of the fastest growing regions in Arizona because it's a great place to live, but everyone needs water. Right, as more and more people moved to the QC area over the years, we drilled more wells and pumped up more water. So we need Dr. Fawcett to dig another well to meet the needs of our growing population. Okay, now start squeezing the hand pump and you kids out there continue to watch what happens. Do you see how the groundwater comes up from the aquifer into the pipes and into your home? Dr. Fawcett, how did you use water today? Let's see, I drank from my water bottle, I washed my hands, I gave water to my dog and some house plants, and I washed the breakfast dishes. Remember, there are over 80,000 people served by the Queen Creek Water Division, and they use water every day. So, Dr. Fawcett, you need to start pumping that other well again. Great, I think we're ready for our next question. Question number three. How can pumping up groundwater affect surface water? Does anyone notice anything about the model that's different? That's right. The river is no longer filled with water. Where did the water go? You're right. It was pumped up and sent to people's houses so that they could use it. Okay, everyone. Close your eyes for just a minute. Now, imagine that you are thirsty, so you get yourself a glass of water with some ice. Imagine that the ice cubes represent the aquifer, and the water represents groundwater in the aquifer. If you use a straw to suck up the liquid water, that's like pumping up some water from the aquifer. Ah, now you've had a refreshing drink. Okay, friends. Open your eyes. Did you imagine something like this? Let me demonstrate with this real glass of water with ice. It's a lot like an aquifer. When you suck up the liquid through a straw, you can see the level of the liquid get lower in the cup. So the level of the liquid is right here. Can you see how the level of the water is lower in my cup now? The liquid is like our groundwater. The ice that remains is like the rock of the underground aquifer. That's exactly what happened here in our model. If I kept on pumping, there would be no water left in the aquifer. Do we want that to happen here? No way. 
So let's use our model to learn about ways to prevent this from happening. We want to keep plenty of water in our aquifer for the future. Sarah, you look puzzled. I am. I think it's time to answer the last question. Question number four. Can water go back into the aquifer? Good question. First, let's think about Sarah's glass of water again. If you drink all the water in your glass, but you're still thirsty, what can you do, Sarah? Well, I would refill it. Just add more water. Exactly. And when water goes back into the aquifer, we call that recharge. Oh, I get it. Just like when your phone battery is low. What do you do? You plug it in to recharge it. But how do you recharge an aquifer, Dr. Fawcett? An aquifer can be recharged when there is precipitation. Rain or melted snow percolates back into the aquifer and becomes part of the groundwater. Let's recharge our aquifer right now with some rain from a thunderstorm. Great idea, but how? Easy, let's make another rainstorm right here and watch the water percolate into the ground to recharge the aquifer. Sarah, I need your help again. Can you make the sounds of a thunderstorm? Oh yes, I love to make thunder. Okay, so here's our thunder. And again, some rain with our rain stick. And some more wind sounds. Can you make wind sounds at home again? Awesome. Okay, so time for a quick thunderstorm. And then the rain gradually stops and the sun comes out. Wow, another great storm we just made together. As you can see, the rain water percolated down to recharge the aquifer. But do we have a lot of rain in the Sonoran Desert? No, remember in the Queen Creek area, we only get about nine inches of rain a year and we are pumping the water out much faster than it can percolate back in to recharge the aquifer. What might happen if we keep pumping out so much water? Unfortunately, there would be no more water in the aquifer. Uh-oh, we don't want that to happen. So let's look at how we can reduce the use of our groundwater to keep our aquifer full. But first, if you're just joining in, I'm. Dr. Fawcett from the town of Queen Creek, Queen Creek, and I'm here with my friend, Sarah, presenting Our Water, Our Future. Because you're not in school, we're joining you safely at home. We're so glad you're learning about water with us today. Thanks, Dr. Fawcett. So, how can we use river water to help us reduce the use of our groundwater? Let's think about that. We know that Queen Creek is a rapidly growing community, and that means we are using more and more of our groundwater for everyday life. Drinking, washing, cooking, cleaning, and more. Queen Creek and the surrounding area is also a very agricultural community. And what do all those crops need so that they can grow? That's right, water. In order to save our groundwater for drinking, the QC has reduced how much groundwater it uses for irrigating crops. How do we do that? Can anyone think of other places we might get water to use for irrigation to water our crops? Oh, I know. One way we can reduce the use of our groundwater is to use river water. But are there any really big rivers in the QC area? No, but there is a big river in Arizona. Does Anyone know the name of this large river which flows the length of our state? Yes, the Colorado River. Dr. Fawcett, can you show us a map of Arizona? Yes, so here's the Queen Creek Water Service area, and here's the Colorado River. The Colorado River comes up from way in the Rocky Mountains, flows downhill to Arizona, through the Grand Canyon, and then becomes the border between Nevada and California, then heads towards the Sea of Cortez in Mexico. Does the Colorado River flow through Queen Creek? 
No. Do you think you could hike all the way to the Colorado River to get some water? No way! It's over 200 miles away from Queen Creek. However, a big canal was built through the desert and now we pump Colorado River water all the way to the Phoenix area and then down to Tucson. A canal is like a man-made river. It's called the Central Arizona Project or CAP. Can you help me spell that? This time, let's use our fingers instead of our arms like this. C A P. Good. And again, C A P. That's right. Central Arizona Project. Great finger spelling, everyone. Dr. Fawcett, can you tell us more about the CAP? During the 1980s, we began to use Colorado River water to irrigate fields in Queen Creek. Irrigating fields uses a lot of water. So, by using Colorado River water to water our crops, we pump up less groundwater. No need to use the pump. Wow! That's one great way to reduce the use of our groundwater. Dr. Fawcett, can you show us the picture of the CAP canal? Sure. This picture was taken from an airplane looking down on the canal. You can see how long it is, and this is only a small part of it. If you walked and walked without stopping, even to sleep, it would take you over a week along the entire canal. Could you do that, Sarah? No way. Can you show the map of Arizona again? Thanks. I want to know more about who uses Colorado River water. Definitely. Think about this. Seven states and Mexico use Colorado River water. That's more than 25 million people using Colorado River water. What do you think happens to the river by the time it reaches Mexico? What do you think, Sarah? I think there won't be much water left in the river if we take so much out of it. By the time the Colorado River reaches Mexico, it hardly flows anymore, just a trickle. Also, the Western United States has been in a drought for years now, meaning we've been getting less than average rainfall. Our water is a precious resource. We still have to be careful with how much water we use. That's right. In summary so far, here in the QC, we mostly use groundwater for our personal water use, but we also use the Colorado River from the CAP for irrigation. So that's two sources of water. Is that going to be enough? Maybe not as our region grows larger. Remember our important saying, our water, our future, our responsibility. Seems like we need to think of another way we can add to our water supply for our future. Any ideas? Aha! Thanks for the hint, Dr. Fawcett. What about this? Used household water. We pumped up a lot of water to use it for washing, brushing, brushing teeth, I mean drinking, flushing. After we use it, where does it go? Can you tell us, Dr. Fawcett? That's right. So it goes down the drain, and then what happens to it? This wastewater, or effluent, travels in pipes to the wastewater treatment plant. The town of Queen Creek shares a wastewater treatment plant with the town of Gilbert and the city of Mesa. The wastewater gets cleaned up, but we don't currently use it here in the QC because we don't have a system in place yet. We don't have the pipes, but our treated wastewater isn't wasted. That's right. Since 1998, the town of Gilbert puts the reclaimed water into large recharge basins, and the water percolates down to recharge the aquifer. So the water is cleaned up at the treatment plant and then it's cleaned even further by nature as the water percolates underground to the aquifer. The aquifer beneath Gilbert is the same as the aquifer beneath the QC. So our reclaimed water is helping to recharge our aquifer and reduce the use of our groundwater. That's great. I'm going to pour some of our wastewater into the model by the treatment plant.
It is mechanically and chemically cleaned, and then it is ready to be used as reclaimed or recycled water. It percolates down to the aquifer and becomes part of our groundwater. As hydrologists continue to seek ways to ensure enough water for our future, reclaimed water is sure to be an important and growing part of our water supply. Recycling our water will help save our groundwater. You're right, Dr. Fawcett. So let's review Queen Creek's water sources that we've talked about so far. First, groundwater is our original water source and where almost all of our water comes from here in the QC. When you turn on a faucet at home, the water came from underground. Second, we have Colorado River water brought here in the CAP Canal from the Colorado River and used only for irrigation in the Queen Creek and the surrounding areas. We might see more of this water used in our area in the future. And third, by treating and reusing our wastewater, we can reclaim or recycle our water. We don't use reclaimed water directly in the QC, but the town of Gilbert is reclaiming it for us to help recharge our aquifer. We might use more reclaimed water in the QC in the future. If you're just joining in, I'm Sarah from the town of Queen Creek, and I'm here with my hydrologist friend, Dr. Fawcett, presenting Our Water, Our Future. Because you're not in school, we're joining you safely at home. We're so glad you're learning about water with us today. Does anyone know how much water on average each person in the QC service area uses per day? 65 gallons. Can you say 65 gallons? Wow, 65 gallons a day, and that's just for everyone's personal water use. That doesn't include any outdoor water use. How much is 65 gallons? Dr. Fawcett, can you show us your water container? So this water container is about one gallon. So that means that each of us in the QC uses about 65 of these containers of water every day. Wow. And then multiply that by the 80,000 people living in the QC. How much is that? 5 million gallons of water. Now that's a lot of water. Have you ever heard this phrase used in the QC? Water, reduce the use. Repeat after me. Reduce the use. Reduce the use. Great, but what does it mean? We've been using our model to talk about reducing the use of our groundwater by using Colorado River water and reclaimed water. Do you think there are ways that you can personally reduce your use of water? Yes, every one of us can conserve water. That is, we can be water smart and not waste water. That's right. If we're careful with how we use water today, we'll have more water for tomorrow. Kids, do any of you have any good ideas on how we can reduce the use of our groundwater? Sarah, what are some of the kids' ideas? Well, lots of kids at schools tell me that a very easy way to save water is when they are brushing their teeth. Can you all pretend to brush your teeth like this? Great job brushing. So, how can you get your teeth clean but still save water? Great idea. Dr. Fawcett, what do you think? I think I would wet my toothbrush and then turn the faucet off. I don't think the water should be running the whole time I'm brushing my teeth. Fantastic. Imagine if everyone in the Queen Creek service area did this. We brush our teeth twice a day. 365 days a year multiplied by almost uh, by almost 80,000 people in the QC area. That's a lot of water we could save just from brushing our teeth. Do you think you can reduce the use when you brush your teeth? I know you can. Repeat after me. Reduce the use. Reduce the use. Here's an easy way to brush your teeth without the faucet running. You just need a small cup that you can call your brush up cup. Keep the cup by your bathroom sink and fill it with water when it's time to brush your teeth. That's all the water you need to brush your teeth. Can you say brush up with just one cup? Brush up with just one cup. That's easy, isn't it, Sarah? 
It sure is. I have a great idea. I bet we can save water when washing our hands. What do you think, Dr. Fawcett? You're right. Can you all pretend to wash your hands at home? Just get your hands wet and soap up and then turn off the faucet when you're washing your hands. You can turn the water back on when you're ready to rinse. The same is true for dishwashing. Okay, pretend to wash some dishes with me. Get your dishes wet and soapy and then turn off the faucet, scrub away the dirt, then turn the water back on to rinse. That's an easy way to reduce the use. What about if we use a dishwasher, Dr. Fawcett? Only run the dishwasher when it's full. The same is true when you do laundry in a washing machine. Sarah, do you have more water conservation ideas? I sure do. How many of you take showers? Good. Show me some good washing in the shower. Great. Uh, what is your job in the shower? Is it to just stand there forever to wake yourself up or is it to get in, get washed, and get out? That's right. You only need about five minutes in the shower. Show me that, everyone. Five minutes. Have someone at home time you to be sure your shower isn't too long or get yourself a five minute shower timer like this one. Do you have one, Dr. Fawcett? I do, I use it all the time. And here's another one related to showers or sinks. You'll need a grown up for this one. If any of your faucets are leaking, that's water being wasted. So get those leaks fixed. Can you think of some other ideas, kids? Or do you have, some, have one, Sarah? Yes, here's one that kids often tell me. It's good to have desert landscaping at home with lots of cacti that don't need a lot of water. But sometimes a plant needs some water I like to use a spray nozzle at the end of the hose so I can turn the water on and off easily and not waste any water. Here's another water smart idea. If my sidewalk gets full of leaves or is dirty, I don't need to hose it down with water. I can just use a broom to get things clean. And sweeping is good exercise. Now that's an easy way to reduce the use. In fact, these are all easy ways to reduce the use of our water, right? Also, because the Queen Creek area is fairly new, many of you live in newer homes that already have water conservation features like low flow shower heads, faucet aerators, and toilets. That's great. Also, did you know that recycling helps save water? By recycling cans, bottles, paper, and plastic, we save some of the water and energy that would have been needed to make them from raw natural resources. So keep on recycling and being water smart. Wow, those are a lot of easy ways to save water. Being water smart and saving water is easy to do, but does it mean that you don't drink water? No! You need water to stay healthy. Does it mean that you don't take a bath or shower? No, it would be too smelly in here. Just use your water wisely, reduce the use, and it won't be wasted. Yeah, can you see how saving water is almost like having another water source? For every gallon of water we don't use, actually for every drop we don't use, that water is available for our future. Now that's water smart for now and for the future. I think you are now expert hydrologists who know a lot about water. What are some of the things you have learned today? Great job. Dr. Fawcett, can you summarize for us please? Sure. We learned that if we pump up too much groundwater, our water table could get lower. And we also learned that we needed to find some other water sources so that we have enough water for all of us living here in the Sonoran Desert now and into the future. We now know that we have three sources of water. And because water is a limited natural resource, we need to reduce the use and practice water conservation because it's our water, our future, our responsibility. Well, I think our job is done here. You don't have to be Dr. Fawcett or your teacher to be water smart. You all know so much now. 
you can go home and teach your parents, your brothers, your sisters, and friends how to be water smart and reduce the use of water. Thanks for your help, Dr. Fawcett. It was so much fun, Sarah, and I think everyone learned a lot. Don't forget to try the sponge investigation at home with a trusted adult. Impress your family with your knowledge of water. And remember this presentation is recorded so you can watch it again later. And be sure to tell your friends about it so they can also be water smart. Also, remember to wash your hands often and you can help reduce the use. After your hands are soapy, turn off the faucet, then scrub your hands for 20 seconds. Then you can turn the faucet back on and rinse away those soap and germs. That's a great way to reduce the use. We had a lot of fun today, and we hope you did too. The Town of Queen Creek Water Division is proud to offer programs like this one to help educate kids all over Queen Creek. Later this spring, we'll be doing Too Good to Throw Away for elementary school students. And you can also find our recorded middle school program, Blue Cart Smart, online. So keep watching. Remember, it's our responsibility to use water wisely today so that there is water in the Sonoran Desert for many generations in the future. So let's say it together one more time. Our water, our future, our responsibility. Thanks for joining us today. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Reduce the use. So long.